day today. It's nice and warm out there. And as we look around at beautiful stained glass windows and see how illuminated they are, we can see that we're going to have a wonderful day and we're going to learn something this morning. Because once again, our guest speaker today is Carrie Munson, so we get to enjoy another bit of preaching from her. I know last week it was quite something. I even went home and still remembered what was said here in this very church, and I thought to myself, wow, I'm writing myself notes. This is amazing. So let's we'll see if that happens again this week. I know that she's that good. I know. Uh, I might have been a one-hit wonder. Oh, never, never. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and sing two songs from the Praise and Worship book this morning for the Welcome and Gathering. The first one will be page 21, Gentle Shepherd, and then the second one will be As the Deer on page 5. So, if you and would, just please. one time through on each song. Pray for you. And our Master of Music says one time through on each song. Please. Do we have to do the praise first? I'm sorry? Do we do the praise first and light the candles? Well, I was going to have the boys come down during your welcome and gathering. Unless, do you have a prayer specifically this well, morning? Well, let me play it. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So we're, we're good. I, I apologize for being offbeat this morning. Neither Sally nor I realized that we were going to end up being lay leaders this morning. So we're kind of doing this on the fly. So if it looks like it's on the fly, please understand. So, all right. We're going to go ahead and let the ladies take over the music.
the announcements are going to come up on the screen there. And they're also in your uh, order of worship this morning. No Bible study, not this week, unfortunately. No choir practice either on Tuesday. Oasis will be held on Wednesday. Then uh, Thursday, again, no Bible study. But Saturday morning, bell rehearsal, so bell choir, those of you involved in that, 8.30 on Saturday morning. And on the 6th there, on Saturday the 6th, um, <clears throat> excuse me, from 5 to 7 p.m., the drive through Soup Supper fundraiser will be taking place here at the church. And uh, if you have any questions at all, Barbara is uh, one of the points of contact for that. I understand there's going to be a variety of soups available, and uh, four different soups, Barbara says. So please, if you have a chance, you can see up on the board there all the different varieties that will be available to you, and uh, I'm sure they're going to be delicious. I guess there's a little difference there. Oh, yes, if you're bringing soups uh, for the uh, fundraiser, please have them to the church by 3 p.m. Okay, and then a little further on down, if you're looking at the, uh, at the order, uh, you'll see that on March 7th, the communion will take place again, and also at 2 p.m., there's a play rehearsal practice there in Delphi. And on the 14th, you have to uh, fiddle with your clocks. So that's coming up quickly again. So. That makes me shudder. Yeah, for all of you who are like me, you may just leave the clock in the car alone. Just do the math. Sometimes it's easier. All righty. Is there a minute for mission this morning? Anyone? I don't see. No. OK. From there, we're going to go on to the opening prayer. Please join me in unison. Dearest Lord, God of heaven and of earth, we come here today to worship you. May we truly forget about our wants and our desires and our to-do lists for now. It is our heart's desire to worship you and you alone, awakening in us your Holy Spirit. Amen. Call to worship would be responsive reading. <clears throat> From water to wilderness. God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes here. On stone and in hearts. God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. From the ancestor of nations to the sun lifted up. God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. We follow Jesus on the Lenten path. For where he is, we will be also. And now we're going to sing hymn number 482 in the blue books there. And this is Praise Ye the Lord, the Almighty. We'll sing all three verses. All three verses. Yeah. Right here.
confession this morning. Trusting in God's promise of salvation, let us confess our sin and repent. Please read uh, in unison with me the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not been sincere Christians. We claim to follow Jesus, but have not taken his path of sacrificial love. We profess to be disciples, but we are not willing to bear the cost of discipleship. We affirm the virtue of self-denial, but we indulge our selfish desires and seek earthly gain. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for sincere repentance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. God deems as righteous all who trust that Jesus has been raised from the dead for our salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Well, does anyone in the congregation have some prayer concerns this morning or something they'd like to share with us, some praises? Barbara, please. I just want to ask for prayer for myself and my family. There's just some issues going on. So I, I know it's in God's hands and that he's got his plan. I just don't know what it is. But pray that I'm patient and have peace and that things are going to work out. We all hope that Barbara's family comes together and the, that God's plan is, is going to come forward in their minds and work its magic the way we, we all hope for. Okay, any other prayer requests or praises? Oh, Jane, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I think we all need to remember the uh, Al and Arlene Aller family. They lost their son. Uh, he had a heart attack and died. And uh, you probably saw it in the paper, but uh, a lot of us knew that family, and so let's keep them in our prayers. I'd like to ask for prayers for a person who worked with me over at Grissom Man Reserve Base. Uh, she's contracted uh, cancer and is uh, having a difficult time with it. It seems like one minute they've got things going forward, and the next minute they find some other <laughs> issue that's taking place. Uh, so uh, prayers for the Matthews family, for Claire Matthews. Anybody else? It's a joy to be here again. Yay. Listen to that. It's a joy to be here again. Yay. Let's say thank you to Carrie. Because <laughs> we're happy that you're here too. Ah, it's kind of like coming home. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very nice sentiment to share with us. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. The sun is shining and the snow is melting. And I hear that sandhill cranes have been sighted down around Rossville, so that's a sure sign of spring when the migratory birds are heading north. So well, there you go. Praise for the birds. Lord, you've heard our praises this morning. You've heard our, our prayers for ourselves and our families and our friends. We ask that you hear them and that uh, you give grace to those who need it. Amen. And if you would please, uh, we'll recite the God's Prayer, or the Lord's Prayer, excuse me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. 
special choral piece for you. shall bow before him. 
even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation, and they will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born, that he has done this. And then I go to Mark chapter 8. Verses 31 through 38. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and he reject and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man, also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And enthusiasm. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Genesis. Chapter 17, 1 through 7 and 15 and 16. This may be a familiar part of a familiar story to you. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make a covenant between me and you. And, you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall no longer be ancestor of a... You shall... Let's start again. As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. 
Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise as we gather this morning to look at your word for us. Open our hearts and our minds to your leading. Send your Holy Spirit to help our understanding. And we give you thanks and praise. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last week, thanks for remembering. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I know. It glares a lot. I'll put my hand on it. <laughs> it is. It's, it, it's like, oh, a bird. Um, <laughs> last week, we talked about God's covenant with Noah and how God remembers and his covenant was for generations forever. His promise. And now he's also having this covenant with Abram. You remember Abram and Sarai kind of got a little ahead of themselves thinking God wasn't moving fast enough and you know brought Hagar in and then we got Ishmael and that was a mess I tell you. <laughs> so I think they had kind of given up and were hurrying God along. Barbara, I under... You know how he felt, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. And now here's Abraham at 99. Now I'm pretty sure, I don't know about you, but I'm confident the thought even at my age, <laughs> the prospect of having a child giving birth again, is not high on my list of fun things to do. Been there, done that. But here, God is fulfilling His promise and reminding Abraham of the promise and making this covenant with him. You will keep. I will keep this covenant. forever throughout all your generations of your offspring. That moment when, <coughs> bless you. I found it right away, Jane, didn't I, down at Delphi? Yeah. I did it right, I mean, I went right into it. My coffee must be weird off. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generation. An everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. There it is there. That everlasting covenant to be God of Abraham. In our traditions, we talk about the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. We are still part of that covenant today. All nations came from him. God makes his promises and we can trust that he is true to his word. God promises, makes that covenant to be God to us for all time. God changed Abram and Sarai's name to bring a new identity as people of God. God changes our name too. He 
He calls us his children. Joint heirs with Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to be in that part of the family. There's a song that I love, and it really hit me. It's called, I Will Change Your Name. I will change your name. You shall no longer be called wounded, outcast, lonely, or afraid. I will change your name, and your new name shall be confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one, faithfulness, friend of God, one who seeks my face. That was the change that Abraham and Sarah had. They walked with God, and God walked with them and guided them. And you have to read the rest of the book if you want to know the rest of the story. God changes us. Now, has anybody else this week felt wounded or outcast or lonely or afraid for some at some point in your week? Yeah, you think, right? I mean, I, the, I think we call that life. And then we remember that whole repent and turn thing, and we refocus on the cross. We refocus. That's what Peter had lost his focus when he tried to rebuke Jesus. Now, I'm sorry, but man, he really had some tenacity. I'm trying to think of the word I should use there. To rebuke Jesus? I mean, come on, Jesus, Peter. Get behind me. The world tries to get in and makes us lose focus or would have us lose focus. And Jesus' words were, oh, man, what's going on in your head, Peter? It's of man, it's not of God. You need to refocus on God because we don't like to think about what was coming. Jesus was trying to prepare them for what was ahead. Remember, he had changed Peter's, Jesus had changed Peter's name. The rock. Not the wrestler. <laughs> God calls us from the woundedness and being outcast, from being lonely and afraid. He reminds us throughout the whole of Scripture that He walks with us. John 3.16 reminds us that He came to save the world. All of us. And until we realize that God has changed our name as people in Him, he changes our identity from woundedness and outcast and lonely and afraid and all those other things that so can easily distract us and continually loves us and reminds us that we are people with confidence, with joyfulness. I don't know, call me crazy, but I think it's really big a little joy in Jesus. We can be overcoming those things that might keep us from looking around and seeing the salvation in the cross. From seeing how God's promises, those covenants that he has made with us last because he said so. We can be overcoming those things. God gives us the gift of faithfulness and calls us friend. And calls us to 
seek him. God told Abraham to walk with him. Jesus says, pick up your cross and come follow me. Walk with me. It was several years ago, last century, that I was on a, a spiritual retreat. And the, I don't even remember the name of the speaker, but the one thing I do remember is the with me principle. So one of the things that we have to stop doing is say, do you want to? And reframe it. I'm going to come with me. I'm going to church this morning. Come with me. Because I really don't want to know if you want to go or not. I just want you to come with me. I'm going to the store. Come with me. Which one are you more likely to answer? Do you want to go to the store? Oh, heck no, I never want to go to the store. But I want to go with you. So come with me. As we continue on this Lenten journey, come with me. Remember that God's covenants are right and true. We had Noah's last week and Abraham's today. And there's a few more, but I don't think you'll let me have that much time. God says, come with me. As we continue to reflect and look at our lives, what is your new name? What do you no longer need to be called? What are those conversations you have in your head with yourself? Okay, I'm not the only one that does that, right? I mean, if you have a conversation in your head, sometimes it says, oh, you idiot. Yeah, okay, well, we need to get rid of that little voice. Get thee behind me. Because God calls us overcoming and confident and joyful and seeking we need to reframe as we go through this Lenten season and look at the cross and remember who God calls us. The name and the identity that he gives us is who we are called to be as we walk with him and invite others on this journey we call faith with us. This is what we get to do. This isn't out of obligation or because it's been going on for generations. It's because God called each one of us by name. And he reminds us that his name for us is beloved, my child. That's how much he loves us. So as you go through this week, as you're doing a 180 and not a 360, I did that several times this week. Did you ever walk out into the kitchen and you stand there for a minute, hoping that maybe you remember why you went in there? <laughs> and then you still don't, so you go back and sit down about the time the cat jumps in your lap. You go, oh yeah, now I know. My cat's really slow. <laughs> God calls us to turn and repent, to stay focused on him, to not be having thoughts of man, but thoughts on God, who calls us to walk with him, who calls us on the journey as we continue to focus on the cross. God's peace be with us as we continue to look to him. Because your name is joyful, confidence, overcoming, faithful, friend of God, in one who seeks his face. Amen. Amen. Lord, dismiss us.
us with thy blessing, 538 in Himmenau. Thank you. 